Yes, it's time for inspiration vibe. And they say worship is the outward display of our inward belief. I repeat that. Worship is the outward display of our inward belief. So whatever you believe in your heart, in your soul, in your mind, in your spirit will be displayed outside. As in kile una absorb ndani, no kile kitaonekana nje. So that is just a layman description of worship. Worship is just outward display of our inward belief. If you, if you believe in money, you're going to worship it. If you believe on your job, you're going to worship it. If you believe in your family so much, you're going to worship them. Hey, I know that is very tricky. Anyway, let us take a look at, at the book of John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24 this is such a common verse but people i it's being misused somehow but let us set the record straight so keep up keep up in our inspiration but yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the father in the spirit and in truth please not we worship the father in spirit and in truth for they for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. Verse 24, God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. Remember, the word of God says that God is spirit. So if you want to worship God, if you need to worship God, you have to worship him in spirit and in truth. The worship comes from deep inside us. Deep, deep, dani spirit in your soul, in your spirit comes from the spirit and you have to worship God in spirit and in truth. What I'm trying to say is just you have to lose yourself before God. Lose yourself, Kabisa, to worship God. Worship is the attitude of the heart. It's not those outward display. When I was in the church, for instance, in church you'll find guys lifting their hands, bowing down, kneeling down. Yes, in they just, kuna tu drama nyingi, people are crying. You're like, are they worshipping God? Those are just out of display, but God looks for the heart. Yeah, so you are, worship's just the attitude of the heart. If we look at the book of Psalms 51, verse 16 verse to 17, which says, you do not delight in sacrifice or I will bring it. Yeah, you do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. Verse 17, my sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. So God looks at the, at the state of your heart the state, the attitude of your heart. That is what you offer to God as worship. It doesn't matter the, the outward display. What really matters is the state of your heart and how you offer it to God, losing yourself completely in adoration of God start losing yourself but God sees what God sees the heart worship is more humbling yourself before God and surrendering yourself to God to losing yourself in adoration of God surrendering kabisa yourself to God the state of the heart that is what God looks at so humbling yourself you cannot humble yourself just by kneeling you know me I'm humble no 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 the state of your heart is very very key when it comes to worshiping the Lord and we and like I say, worship is a lifestyle, yeah? Not something that you can do it once. Or asema, ah, nili worship jana, so leo hakuna aja kuworship, kesho hakuna aja kuworship. Let me just not worship for the next 10 days, just because I worshiped yesterday. No, it should be a lifestyle, continuously, doing it every day, wherever you are. It doesn't matter the surrounding, it doesn't matter who and who is looking at you. Lose yourself completely and worship the Lord. When the Spirit convicts you right there, do it there and then and worship the Lord, you know, because he, after all, is our God, is our creator, is our heavenly father. And also in worship, there are those acts of worship, yeah, you'll be led to do by the Holy Spirit, you know. Once you surrender yourself completely and you adore God, you lose yourself in a direction of God, there are those acts of worship that come with when when you're worshiping God and is mostly done by bowing down, kneeling, 
We can read that in Psalms 95, verse 6, and I had said it earlier. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Those are just acts of worship. That is not worship. Those are just acts. Yeah? There's a difference of worship and acts. So, hizo tu ni matendo. Hizi vitu, vitu na ambazo una standa, sa zile una worship, una abudu mungu. Those are just acts of worship. Bowing down, kneeling down, yeah? And and lifting your hands, you know? Me, I like bowing down completely, even lying down on the ground. Those are, uh, that, that is just my act of worship. When I'm worshiping God, that is when I'm in, whether in my house, whether in church, I love it when I, na lalanga chini flat kabisa or i kneel down yeah that is my act of worship i don't know what's yours let me know on our facebook page at y254 yes and it is through true worship that we invite the holy spirit to convict to speak to us to comfort us uh, through true worship we've learned that true worship is just the attitude and the state of your heart a continuous lifestyle when you lose yourself kabisa surrendering yourself humbling yourself kabisa before the lord that way you invite the Holy Spirit to come within you. And that is when the Holy Spirit starts helping you to discern what is right and what is wrong. That is when you allow the Holy Spirit to help you even convict you and convict you in the things you've done. That is when the Holy Spirit comforts you, talks to you and leads you in one way or the other by fully, fully, fully surrendering yourself to the Lord. Remember that, the state of your heart. And if, and as I malizia hapa, my final point it is that it is impossible. It is very impossible to worship God and anything else at the same time. Is in Aje, Aje, unanzete to worship God. You want to worship God. Remember, God is very high, yeah. And you want to put your job at the same level at God. It is very impossible. So choose one thing to run with. You cannot serve two masters at the at the same time. It's very impossible. But where I will encourage you. God is above every other thing. Every other, uh, every other thing is the king above every other kingdoms. Yeah, is the Lord above every other lords? Is the greatest of all times? You know, His love endures forever. His mass is merciful. Yes, is is everlasting. So, there's no way you can serve a living God who is above every other God and other thing at the same time. Choose God. Don't choose anything else. Let other things if what, but choose and seek the kingdom of God first and everything else will add to that. And that brings me to the end of inspiration. Well, for these and more, every Sunday, every Sunday here at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. DigiNix 